I teach a pretty small high school in Kansas. So it's not, I've taught at different schools throughout my career. And so this is, but I, I can tell you that um, so much of hate, hatred is, is rooted in ignorance. It, this, I know it's almost cliche to say that, but we, we, ha- we can't forget that it's so true. I mean, we have a lot, so many, like if you just ask people why, like if, oh, I hate this group and, I, and, I, and I'm going to universalize this because I think this is not just a problem with, um, you know, hate against Jews. It's a, it's a hate against, I see this against with political parties today. Look, look at the division between Republicans and Democrats. It's, it's, it's gotten to a point now where people don't even talk to each other anymore. So the, if you start by asking these people, why do you hate this, this other side or um, whatever the other is with capital O. Um, and then once they try to explain it, um, I think it f- immediately falls apart. Um, but you can't just stop there. You have to continue to, I mean, I'm a, I'm an educator. Obviously that's what I do. Like you've got to just as m- whatever way possible, you've got to educate the masses. I think, um, the fact that, um, my video has done so well is very promising. I, uh, it's been a little scary cause I didn't expect it to do so well. Um, and so sometimes I worry about my family's safety because I do get some hateful comments, but at the same time, um, I think they appreciate the fact that I'm not deleting these comments and I'm sometimes interacting them and I'm with, and I'm saying, I'm asking them, why do you believe this? And almost always they give just kind of answers that just are ridiculous, but but if, if you, if you don't, I think, uh, you've got to poke and prod, you've got to like challenge these people. Same thing with flat earth, same thing with cl- climate change denial. You can't just marginalize these people and put them in a corner and say this, they've got radical beliefs. Let's just ignore them. No, you've got to get everybody. Like we keep saying here, we are all on the same team. We're all human beings here. And we've got to communicate whether I, I don't care if one side has a ridiculous viewpoint, we've got to interact with them. So interaction and then uh, poking and prodding, questioning them, why they believe it, what they do, and then um, trying to give them the facts whenever possible, the facts. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, Dr. Lightman, uh, what do you think is the solution? And, and is it the same solution as Matt suggests uh, to general uh, hate between people, between groups? Yes, uh, there's no doubt that the general human ego is always growing. However, the question is, how do we balance that? How do we... How can we actually bring about some balance? According to the laws of nature, the way I study them, both in biocybernetics and from the wisdom of Kabbalah, and also what general philosophy acknowledges, and the history of the people of Israel. What I'm seeing from all these sources is that essentially it's about human connection. That's the solution. And that solution needs to to happen by that group that can enable it, that group called the people of Israel. And they're not maintaining that, that positive connection. And because they are representatives of the rest of humanity, what happens in them replicates and ripples through to the nations of the world and the other way around. When they maintain positive human connection, then if they do that, then the mutual hatred and animosity will subside. And that is the origin for why they're they're being blamed for all the troubles in the world. Now, I'm not an anti-Semite, God forbid. On the contrary, I'm just trying to point to the law of nature. And because I see it as a law of nature, you can't say whether it's good or bad. It's just how it works. If there is a group of humanity that was collected from all of humanity to bring a greater level of human connection, it has to enable it. It has to maintain that. And otherwise, it creates hatred. 
Otherwise, hatred, to, hatred of Jews is simply irrational. There's no way to understand how it sticks throughout history and mutates and evolves and reappears and resurfaces again and again and now in our time. It rises again together with the hyperconnected world, the online world, and even though humanity has gone to space and did whatnot, and it it doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense. So what I'm saying is that for thousands of years, it is written that this is a law of nature. And that's the origin of this phenomenon. To the Jews, as the representatives of the rest of the world, have to make peace between them, say, between 10 million people. That's it. And then the, the whole world will be able to, to, to be in peace as well. And so, in my view, what I think needs to be done is to spread that knowledge all over the world and say that to the world. And the whole world can even express its request from that group to bring about positive human connection. And then we will see that the whole world accordingly will calm down and all countries and nations will come together. I understand it sounds a bit um, maybe far-fetched, uh, like a, some sort of a legendary dream, but it's a very ancient research that to this day shows that, that, it's, that it's true, that it just keeps happening.